What's up, everybody? Welcome to Gojo with Mike Gola Jr. That is me. With me, as always, super producer extraordinaire, Brandon Newman. Brandon, how we doing? I get to ask them. <laughs> we're doing the intro normal scene okay, to help I'm people sorry. feel good. We're I'm live good. at we're live at Radio Row for Super Bowl Fifty Seven. How are you already in a bad mood? I, it's I'm only like day three. I'm surprisingly not mad at you right now, so everything's going well. All right, you know what? Uh, because we've had some marital strife here, we've invited some more people into our uh, sports talk podcast bedroom, which sounds really weird now that I've <laughs> said yeah. that out loud. Uh, um, with us now today here, as we are back at Radio Row, you guys know them as Golik and Smetty. Michael Oak Sr., my dad, Jessica Smetana, uh, also my dad, as we've established in the last couple of days. I, I feel like we're brought on to be therapists for these two. No, oh, you guys goodness. have been fighting since you got to Oh, Phoenix. my gosh. It's so funny. So when we were first getting ready to do this podcast, I was talking to Chris Long, who does the podcast with one of his like lifelong friends in Macon, their producer. And I was asking him about it. He goes... You got to be prepared because doing a show with like one of your best friends, you know each other so well that eventually you're going to come to blows. And normally we do this 2,000 miles apart, so that never happens. And yeah. this week we've been together a lot. And so I got to see some of the quirks of you around uh, public food that angered me. Uh, listen, when we went to Jacksonville for the bowl game, the Gator Bowl, I saw him at the very late at night. I'm sure you saw on social media. I took pictures and showed how drunk he was. He was trying to fight me in the lobby like we were in college all over again, like wrestling like we used to be in your home. Yes. Like just yeah, like moving oh yeah. furniture. And I was like, Mike, what is going on in your head? So like that physical fighting is what we do verbally a lot. But I heard about your food things and oh, you, you're are you ridiculous. To? Ridiculous, Brandon. <laughs> I'm ridiculous. Yes, yes. ridiculous. You're the king of free food. So the, of course the, you think I you're the king of free stuff. Did, Mr. Did Jess heard true. this? I, I heard I heard bits and pieces it's, and I have to say I kinda see both sides. Oh, she's I about do. to say Brandon's point. Oh, wow. Point. She's about there to say Brandon's point. There are good people on both sides I of this. I see Brandon's <laughs> point. To be honest, I'm someone, so the argument was about Brandon wanting you to take him to get fast food after you just had a free media dinner offered to you that, that he, he turned did not That he eat. turned down. Because it was picked over and out in the air. So I'm someone who's a little like, I, first of all, I have a food allergy. So most media dinners, I'm, I'm not really sure what's in it. So I just kind of avoid it. Sorry for I'm also loss. someone who like, ever since COVID, when food's left out, I'm kind of like, eh. Like I used to do that Whole Foods hot bar every day. I used to yeah. tell people, yeah. bury me inside a Whole Foods hot bar okay. because I I used to eat that <laughs> hey, You used to say single, that out loud to people? I, I think I tweeted it once. I used to, That's... I love the Whole Foods hot bar. I haven't looked at it the same in three years. Smitty, so, really? tell everyone how rich you are. It's the cheapest food at Whole Foods. That is true. It's the it's the best oh, deal at Whole Foods. If you go by the fudge, you're going to get hit over the head, but the hot bar. The hot bar is a good deal. Don't, so, don't you, even play with me right now. But you changed with COVID. Really? Yeah, well, it's, I don't know why. It's just like now it's like everyone touches the handles People and it's left out. People could sneeze on my food and I'll eat it. I don't okay. care. We know you're no, no, disgusting. No, no. I don't care. I'm like that with hairs because I usually eat at Waffle Houses. Like I, you, I'll pull the hair right from my teeth and just keep going I guess at that's it. my but, thing, too. Yes, like, you, wait. You're one of us yes. with that. You're in the mix with so us. So you'll Everyone do that. Limits. You'll do that, limits. but but food that's sitting there and is picked over, you won't touch. All of a sudden, you're Mr. Mr. Hands Off. I can't do Give it. Give me a break. You've got it. children. Like, <laughs> dirty, sticky children. Yeah. Every kid is just boogers and Again, syrup. Like sticky. There's we had a dessert crap. last night that was a sticky toffee something. Oh. That Brandon set a land speed record for the <laughs> amount of times one person can insert sticky into a conversation. It was so disturbing. <laughs> it was. You've been weird about food all week. But I get your point of view. I also see Mike's side. You don't want to drive him to get takeout. You want to go home and go to bed. He just had an opportunity for food. He turned it down. And now it's too late. You go home. Whatever. But I also like. I like to choose what I eat. And usually at the media dinners, it's like... The same thing everyone else is getting. It's usually not what I'm in the mood for. I mean, dry ass am, am I building yeah. a, a fence here for you to sit on? Wow, you're really sitting on the fence on this one. <laughs> this, this, Holy I mean, smoke! I, I see both sides. This I really Gullick do. This double team. I'm not. I was not prepared for. Wow. Yeah, no. I uh, was not prepared for the story. Quite honestly, if you, that's picked over and people touched it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I simply can't be bothered with yeah. this. No sneeze guard, guys. There's no sneeze guard. Uh, how many people are seriously sneezing on the it's, food? It's a media event. You'd Everyone. Be it's, we're gross. I mean, we're all make gross. Sneeze guards. All right, we're gross, but we're also grown ups. Like, we're not walking up there, like, you know how and kids just, just like, on cough it? randomly? They do the one where, like, 
like they stick out their tongue yeah. when they cough every time. What, what pers- media person's doing that? They're at least turning their head or something. It's like nasty. Jim Rome was being it's, real nasty by that it's thing. It's not like a loogie's <laughs> flying onto the food. Jim Rome's Stu Gatz is over there. Yeah. Jen, oh, Jen, the, the Dave finger Damashek saw oh. stuff his hand in the, yeah. in the beef. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Damashek did the My Germs thing from Scary Movie <laughs> Show. Oh, God. Real quick on this. Are we all, everybody good with double dipping? Oh, yeah, obviously. Absolutely, absolutely I offered right? you guys yeah. all some salsa yesterday. I was double dipping in that salsa. Yes, absolutely. And you knew it. That is true. Jess was walking around. Radio. This is peak Radio Row energy. Jess is walking around with a bag of chips and a container yeah. of salsa, munching away. Just going, you guys want some of this? Yeah. <laughs> Love that. I oh. was hungry. That's my partner right there. Oh, that is incredible. As oh, yeah. always, you can download, subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. Leave us a five-star rating. Do the same for Golik and Smetty. Check us all out on YouTube this week. What's the, uh, what's the Super Bowl week been like so far? Dad, I want to start with you because you're also calling this game as a part of the broadcast on radio for Westwood One. And if you're like me and don't have SXM in your car, you can go on the NFL's app and the radio stuff is on there. I listen to my dad dutifully every weekend. You are a liar. Instead of great broadcasters like Greg Olson. We know that's not true. You are such a liar. Jess listens to me more than you do. So she is now ahead of you on my child status. Oh, well, I I was going to say, I don't want to get in that hierarchy, but I do listen to you on the radio just because I'm constantly... So, uh, Mike, you're the only one. It's me, Brandon, Jake... Sid, Mike, or yeah. Mike yeah. Sid? Oh, I'm definitely above Sid now. Okay. Definitely above Sid, and I think the dogs are above Sid, quite honestly. Yeah, no, that's yeah. also fair. Oh, but no. What's the week of prep been like for you guys? You guys have gotten to be around these teams. Well, that, that, that's been the fun of this, because last year was still kind of the end of, of COVID. When we met with players, it was still Zoom. But here, Monday when they had the, the Monday night um, – uh, media night. Before that happened, down kind of in the basement, a, a, a floor below, we got to talk to the Eagles and the Chiefs and the, the, the different players. So that was cool. It felt like the old, like when we were doing games, the old production meetings, you know, when you get to talk to the players. So that was very cool. Talked to like three or four in each team and then ran into a few in the hallway. The, by the way, the Kelsey brothers are just the coolest. They're just they're just so, so nice. And like so polar opposite. They really are. Because I said, I said uh, to Travis, I said, ready to be an uncle again you know jason his wife's ready to he's like yeah i got three kids he goes i gotta i gotta start doing something here i'm like you know you you don't have to get too crazy on that i don't probably not hurting there so you know it's probably probably okay you know what i'm saying but it's been very cool to talk to those players and kind of get on the inside a little bit um and, and get ready for that what's weird is you know what happens on a radio row we're all doing interviews on radio row and they always ask you a pick and i always have to say i can't make a pick you, you, know? you get to do the like very cool, like, I have to recuse myself yes, thing. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I'm so sorry, and but I'm a part of the I, call I try of the not game. to, you know, I try not to say it in a big footing way, but, you know, it's I It's impossible not to when you're yeah. using the word recuse. Yes. yes. Recuse yes. is oh, a professional yes. ass word. Chris Fowler, it's a douchey word. Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit. Kirk Herbstreit. When Kirk Herbstreit recuses recruising. himself, I always say, yeah. that is a look at me Louie move. Yeah. See, oh. I, that's why I don't use the word. Did I ever use the word you recuse? You did on our show yesterday. Shit, did I really? Yeah, yeah, you did. Damn. What else would you, what, what other You're one of the media elite, the bourgeois. I have to, I have to, I have to. Sit this one out. Yeah, there you go. That. Or, or you use what I would say. I can't be doing that. <laughs> I can't be doing that. <laughs> it's like, you, you want to pick now? I can't be doing no, that. No, I'm, can't calling, do it. I'm can't calling. Do I'm it. calling shits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's been the difference. I'll go to the practices as well uh, this week. Uh, both both practices, obviously, practicing at different places. So that's kind of a cool part about it. And, and I had only done sideline for the first time last year in the Super Bowl and do it again this year. Kurt Warner and Kevin Harlan in her booth. And Laura Oakman's down on the sideline. She's like the pro sideline. I'm down there as kind of an extra analyst, like to kind of shoot the breeze with Kurt about what's going on in the field. But very cool. As I said, the coolest thing is I'm front and center for the halftime performance. Yeah. Yeah. And last year with Jay-Z and Eminem and Snoop, I mean, it was awesome. And now Rihanna this year, so it, it's great seats for that. Who is she going to bring on as her guest? I've been talking about this with people all throughout the week, and no one has a clue. We're is it Drake? leaning Jay-Z. We're I leaning don't Jay-Z. think it's going to be Drake. I think, I think Drake's going to sit this did, one out. Didn't, she did a song with Eminem, too, didn't she? Yeah. Yes, yes. it was... Uh, yeah. It was a. It Love was kind the way of. You lie. Wasn't it a yeah. little controversial yes. song? Uh, I, I but think Eminem if I was remember. just here. I feel like Eminem yeah, was I know. Out there, I know. Just well, Jay Z was too. True. Did yeah. Jay Z perform last year? 
He did not, he's always around now. He produced it, didn't well, he? He produced it, and he is a part of the group that works with the NFL right. on right. Yeah. securing musical acts. So he just feels like he's always lurking. There. But he also brought us Rihanna. Like I, he, he, he found I Rihanna. I feel like so it's going like, to be Calvin Harris or, or like someone like that. Ooh, I do. Yeah. And I, it, it just fits the other demo. It's like we got the Rihanna fans. We got like the people who listen to yeah, electric EDM, music and yeah. all that stuff. Like Not, not like you, because as we, we've learned this week, you listen to a lot of music with words in them. Too many words. <laughs> Too many words, Brandon. Yes, yes. He's got a problem. He's pointed out by his family. Listens to too much music that has words. Needs yeah. fewer uh, words in his music. Really? Can we move on? No. Will you guys be <laughs> Will you guys be stunned if Rihanna pulls me up on stage? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, You're gonna play. break a hip. What would you do on oh, stage? Oh come with on, Jess. Oh, wow. I mean, is this really? unbelievable? He'd, he'd do the same like dance moves he does everywhere. It's like a it's like a double cross crotch chop. <laughs> He does the Gendam style video. He goes back to that one every no! now and then. Well, or like, he loves what like would you finger do? points too. Oh, you little do the finger, finger do the little finger yeah. point. He does a little yeah. finger wheel. You know what? Right I, I I stay you know within like yeah. Will Smith oh, and yeah. uh, what was the movie with he and Hitch. Kevin J. Hitch? Yeah, oh my God. You know I kind of stay the, within myself also, a little bit. He also loves a good fist uh, rock like little, this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? I'll shake the hips a little bit too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do not mock me. All right. She I'm, age I'm sorry. Me I know it's every really show. it's really offensive and inappropriate, and I am sorry. I am Are sorry really? for the ages. Do you do this to your father and mother? Constantly, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. I enjoy it because none of his other kids talk about how old he is, <laughs> and he's not that old, but it's fun to hear. I'm 60. I'm getting up there. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, okay. it's pretty concerning. Yeah, whatever. We're, we're getting you ready for a wonderful home. <laughs> Uh, at some point here What's down your the road. What's your font on your phone? No, oh, we'll talk about it later. It's not bad. It's, a, it's okay. offensive. It's not bad at all. Okay. Yeah. Shut up, Mike. My God. It's always on ring, too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I love I love an older person. I'm sorry, ringing. Mike. I am. I feel bad. It's, 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 I, it's my worst quality is I age shame. I, I, I really, I, I, I'm I, terrible. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad of the one year we spent together because it's freaking over. Uh, 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 <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, am I too young for wow. you now? You can age shame me back. You can talk about how stupid millennials are. Oh, that is well, true. We, have, we get thrown under the bus a lot. You have no you idea what, uh, what VHS tapes are or anything like that. Yeah. You never had to die, you use a landline. Just throw it back at me. Oh, yeah. Oh, exactly. I, you know I'm a dumb millennial. You know why I don't? Because I'm nice. Yes. Yeah, all right. Not yeah. a hater. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Jess, how's Super Bowl week been for you so far? I know you met Cam Hayward not too long ago. Oh, Pretty my gosh. Exciting. Large yeah, that being. was um, really – I'm someone who does not often struggle for words, but I – was kind of thrown. I was. I told Dave Damachek, who was just doing a show with Cam Hayward, like, "Oh, I want to. I'm, I'm going to watch your show with Cam. I'm a big fan of his." I'm like, "Can you introduce me?" And he was like, "Yeah." And they finished the show, and he's like, "Jess, there's Cam." And I was like, "Ugh." <laughs> and I didn't know what to say. And I was like, "Hi." Like, I'm, I work for the Dan Levitard show and DraftKings. Like, I'd love to get you on the show sometime. But it was really. Uh, I just. I played it really not cool. Like, I was stumbling over my words. Oh God. He's just such. He's such a large man with such beefy hands. He is so nice. I, I almost was like, "Can you just be mean to me?" And then. I can play off of that, but he was right. very kind. Yeah, no, he's it's it's um, unnervingly kind for his size. Yeah. He's and a nice like, guy. You know, I'm a Steelers fan. Like I had to do that whole thing, you know, which is a little embarrassing when you say you're a fan of something. I feel like because then they think that you're weird. Well, and they like I feel like they automatically put the guard up. Like, oh, they're a fan, so right. I have to like yeah. be on my best yeah. behavior. Yeah, but it's for like this. I'm a fan, but Sign I'm also I work in media. Like right. I'm, you know, so, I, I don't want an autograph. He was one of my like I again I say welcome to the NFL. Like welcome and then goodbye. Like right. he was the one that helped throw me out of the club very quickly when I tried like to join. You around the same age, right? Uh, around the same age. He's a few years older, and he yeah. was already one of the better players on the Steelers when yeah. I got there for rookie camp. And I remember he came around on like a tackle, tackle stunt. And and first, like, headbutted me, which his gigantic <laughs> cannonball head. I thought I had a big, hard head. I learned there's levels to this shit. And then he's also bigger, faster, stronger. So he just extended his arm out. You know, like the little brother thing where, yeah. like, the older brother puts his hand out yeah. and you can't get your arms over there. That was how I felt. And that was one of those first moments. I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll do some else. Like, maybe yeah. I'll go somewhere else. <laughs> maybe I'll different. host a podcast. So, yeah. so that threw you a little bit. Is there anybody here that you think you would meet where you would pull a Jess and be kind of at a... Uh, lost for words. I mean, it happens for me in the most unimpressive places. Like, there's a lot of really cool, like, celebrity people walking around here and all pros. And, like, I met Nick Hardwick, who was the center for the Chargers for a decade <laughs> last year and called my mom after. I was like, Nick Hardwick knew who I was. Like, he had listened to some of my stuff before, at least lied about it. <laughs> That's great. I mean, he's part of the reason I got, like, tattoos. He had these awesome tattoo sleeves when wow. he played for the Chargers. He was your tattoo and I always, info? I always <laughs> thought it was an awesome aesthetic. So now I've got a full sleeve on one side and a half on the other in large part because I you 
thought should it was get his face tattooed on the side with oh, the half oh, oh, I like that. Oh, my man. God. Right, Why? him between all of my dogs that have passed yeah. away right there and looked like a memorial to him for some reason would oh, be man. really weird. I like that idea. Yeah. Well, it was I my have, idea, so well, obviously I like it. I mean, that would be well in line with me and strange football um namesakes considering yeah, as you know Darius. my my middle con my confirmation name so brand i don't know if you know even know this no i don't so in the catholic church you've got to choose uh when you are confirmed yes, it's like confirmation you, yes. you choosing the religion you have to pick a confirmation name. So Which, like, like, by the way, you have to do when you're too young to not choose it. Yes. But that's it's besides like, the point. It's like when you're in Spanish class and you got to choose a name? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So I had to pick my Spanish confirmation name. Okay. And my normal name is Michael Lewis Golick Jr. And when I was going through this, you're supposed to pick, like, a saint or something that means Wait, a lot Michael to you in the Lewis, religion. Michael Lewis, like, the author? Like... You're oh, Michael Mike. Lewis, like his father. <laughs> Michael Lewis, Moneyball Golic should yes. be your nickname. <laughs> Michael Lewis, Golic Jr. That, Michael that Lewis, the blindside Golic. <laughs> Coming to a book signing near you. Oh my God! But you're supposed Sorry. to pick like a saint or something that means a lot to you in the religion. At that time in the early 2000s, Darius Walker was a great running back for Notre Dame football, <laughs> and so I shoehorned that in and found a Saint Darius and made that my confirmation uh, name because of Darius Walker, a running back who like ended up being an undrafted free agent and playing for the Texans for a little bit, and yeah, even in I mean, Notre Dame lore, he's a great is not guy. the best running back to ever come through that. But school. I always think of Darius. Darius Walker, and I think of Tim Collins, the old PA announcer at Notre Dame, just saying, Darius Walker, because he just had like a, <laughs> nice, a nice three-yard gain, and he just say, Darius Walker. Uh, you know exactly what I'm thinking, right? I, oh, 100%. The PA voice. 100%. Darius Walker walked so Armando Allen could run. Is that fair? No, they were around the same. They were yeah. around the same team. I think they were on the same team. They were on the same team. No? There was generations no. between those. I mean, two. I was same 13 style. when I was being confirmed. Okay. So Armando Allen was one Everything that teammates. happened before 2000 didn't happen, right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I'll say this. <laughs> so back to your question. After the 30 for 30 Ravens, uh, yeah. Baltimore Bullies, yeah. uh, 30 for 30s came out. I mean, any of those guys outside of Shannon, because I know him, uh, he doesn't have an email address. Which is just something what? that annoys me about him. Um, and but Trent Dilfer, I yep. saw. Yeah. I mean, that that that's a man right there. The, uh, the goose. Trent, Trent Dilfer, who thinks all these new quarterbacks are unimpressive. Trent, <laughs> what a bar! It's going to be interesting with him head coach and what he does. I, yeah, UAB head coach yeah. Trent Dilfer. Oh yeah. What, really what a wild oh, yeah. season addition. Yeah. yeah. It did. Well, he did that top, top quarterback camp all the time, yeah, and now he's going to be a coach. He's the quarterback guru. Listen. The last time they put a former Ravens as a head coach didn't go out so well with Ed Reed, so I, I believe it when I see oh, it. Oh, that whole Ooh. debacle. I believe yeah. it when wow. I see it. Brandon, I want to segue because you mentioned UAB, which is a group of five school, and, and you played your grad season oh, at my God. a Maction school, Ball yes. State. Yes. Would you know, Mike Mike Sr., uh, we discovered <laughs> last Mark night Senior. that I have a photo of Brandon playing for Ball State on my cell phone. Really? Because his first game, or I guess like his first game, third game at Ball State yes. was at Clemson, and it was my first Clemson home game. Oh. So I have a bunch of pictures of like the field and like selfies with my roommates and stuff. And we were in the car last night and we discovered that he it played was, in that game. It was, wow. it, was, it, was, it was a very weird how it came up because I was like, she was like, oh, freshman year Clemson. I, I first time I knew that. And I was like, oh yeah, I love Clemson. I talked about the players and the, uh, not the players, the fans and the type of fans they have. And then she was like, oh, Ball State, September. She said the date exactly. And I was like, oh yeah. And she's like, I probably have pictures of you on my phone. Scrolls Which, through by the way, 5,000 no, photos. How do you have that picture? 50, I have 50,000 photos on my phone. Oh, my God. How does it function? Uh, it's pretty fast, honestly. And then there was a literally a good, a good 11, and then she found the field goal block team where I was hiding behind a linebacker, and I was just blown Holy away. I, I, I just think it's such a small world. I watched you play for Ball State when I was a freshman at Clemson, and now here we are at Radio It Rome. was like a spy movie. Jess was just like, enhanced. I was like, what was your number? Enhanced. <laughs> Were you on the field enhanced. goal blocking team? Hey, wow. Six tackles, three TFLs, one sack. I mean, and I, he I knew had a good, good game. Right? I had a good game at Clemson. Did you game. really? You yeah, know your stats game. from that game? Wow. Yeah, was, I mean, it was Clemson. Okay. Name got called a lot. Well, oh, ooh. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. Wow. Hell yeah. I'm talking a little oh smoke God. here. There we huh? go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Dad, you can't give a pick for I this I cannot game. give a pick. I'm sorry. I have to recuse myself. You can't be doing that. You have to. You can't be doing, <laughs> can't that. Be doing that. Can't be doing that shit. I must sit this one out. <laughs> uh, Jess, you can give a pick. I gave a pick on, on Golik and Smitty yesterday. I said, I think the Eagles are the better team, but I'm not picking against Patrick Mahomes. <clears throat> so, I'm going with the Chiefs. All right, rocking with the Chiefs there. Yeah. Respect it. 
Uh, everyone, make sure you check out, download, subscribe, rate, review, Golik and Smeddy for uh, Dad recusing himself, elderly shaming, yep. and uh, more and, great And things. you were on our show, too, yesterday. Yes. So everyone should check that out. Yeah, we we this talked is... about our, our adventures at TPC Scottsdale, in which you did not give away anything. No. But we do have something in video form. V video will be coming out soon with yeah. uh, with Mike and Jess and myself from the TPC that I think, I think people will enjoy. It was a yes. lot of fun. Exactly. It was a hell of a day. It was a great sort of pregame for what's coming up with the Waste Management Open. I know we're going to try and get over there and see some of the debauchery on the course, go get showered with beer. Speaking of pregame, you know, the best part of that shoot we did is the last half hour, they, they opened the bar and I started slamming beer. Yes. It was oh, like yes. 11.30, yeah. too. It was awesome. Yeah. 11.30, people eating cheeseburgers and chugging Li beers. Liquid Only lunch, baby. Liquid lunch. Oh, my God. All right, we are going to take a quick break. It is DraftKings v Sim Family Day around here. So when we come back, we are going to be joined in two parts by Michael Lombardi from the GM Shuffle and Stormy Bonatoni from v -Sin's The Final Countdown, a name that I will continue the to get right. Final Countdown. <laughs> That was great, guys. Nailed it. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Gojo with Mike Golick Jr. That is me, uh, Brandon Newman, with me as always here live at Radio Row, Super Bowl 57. Very excited to be joined by Michael Lombardi, former NFL executive and co-host of the GM Shuffle, uh, wherever you guys get your podcast. How you doing? It's good to be here. Good to meet you. Good to see you and hang out in here. I, I feel like I'm at a Notre Dame reunion. Should they play that Notre Dame theme song all, as we get on the set here? <laughs> see, people don't know this about the editing as we record these podcasts. Yeah. In the post, Brandon just dubs the Notre Dame fight song at low yeah. volume. Yeah. Yeah. So when my phone rings, my phone rings to the Sopranos, uh, the, 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 the movie to the beginning of the Sopranos music. I assume both of you guys' phones rings to Notre Dame fight song, right? It, it's a requirement to receive yeah, the I degree. Got the, I got so, that. The Sopranos that, yeah. song, though. All right, yeah. so you lean all the I way go. I go. I go either Sopranos or or a Godfather theme. But I've been on the Sopranos. Yeah, I'm all Jersey. I grew up in Jersey. I was born and raised in Jersey. So yeah, I'm I'm pure Jersey. I am. Uh I am from the Church of Springsteen. Yes, I am. It's my number one party trick, as I adjust on the fly here. Uh, I was actually born in Jersey. So I was born in Voorhees, and my dad was Eagles, playing for right? the Eagles. Okay. So, yeah, so we lived across the bridge there. So I get to technically claim Jersey, even though I was there when I was like three years yeah, old. I, yeah. I have two grandsons that I technically claim are Jersey boys. I, my oldest grandson was born in Jersey because my son worked for the Jets, and then my second one... He was born in Jersey, even though we worked for the Patriots. So, yeah, I got at least two in the family. My son's born in uh, Morristown. There so, you go. Yeah, yeah my, my grandson was born in Morristown, too, right there. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, so, we've, so, we've got the Jersey pipeline the Eagle. firmly yeah, established got the Eagle, yeah. and the Eagle pipeline up here. Uh, all leading to this week, which is very exciting. You've got the bling out for this week? Yeah, I brought it out. This it. is from the when we beat the, the Falcons, 28-3, to came back. So that's a good one. And then I had the one when we beat Seattle here. This is a great, uh, for me, it's a great memory to come back to this town and remember that Seattle game and, and all that went in that. And, and uh, you know, the, the ability for Belichick to really, you know, kind of watch Pete Carroll on the sideline. I wrote about this in Gridiron Genius, my book, about not calling that timeout. Well, we're all up in the box screaming for him to call timeout. And he's just standing there looking at, at Pete. And he knew something was wrong and they weren't sure what they were going to do. And then Malcolm makes the play that basically uh, gets you a ring. So I, I, my first year in the league, I won. I went. I went 15 and one, and won a Super Bowl with the 49ers. And then it took forever to get back to win again. What wow. is that like? And we hear this all the time with players too, who maybe don't have that realization because they come in and have early success about just how difficult it is to actually get to win. Yeah, these you can almost take it for granted. I mean, I was around Bill Walsh, so you think, okay. Then the next year, Joe gets hurt, and we struggle through. And then in 86, we think we got a really good chance. And then Joe gets killed by Jim Burt there in the Meadowlands yeah. and lands on his back. And then, you know, it kind of kind of whittles away a little bit there. So, you know, you think you think you're close, but to climb that mountain again is really hard. And you got to have a lot of players that have that ability to want to climb the mountain, like Brady. You know, Brady, you, you asked Brady if he wanted anything. He, you 
he doesn't think he's won anything. He has that ability to have great competitive stamina, so he just keeps constantly working to get there. That takes a lot. Can you speak to the after getting to the mountaintop, the motivation to get back there? We saw the Rams fall off. Everyone talks yeah. about the Super Bowl hangover. How real is that? So uh, we're flying back from Phoenix here on the plane after the Malcolm Butler play. I'm, I'm sitting next to my wife, and Bill comes back, and he starts literally starts going into what we have to do from that day forward to get ready. And then he goes up to Scott O'Brien, who he and I go back to the UNLV days together, and he starts going through Scott. It's just, it's a mindset. And you just literally, Belichick buried it, went on and moved to the next one. And it's just, you got to have that. And if you try to revel in it a little bit and you try to re rejoice, you can't go. Look at the Eagles. They spent a lot of time what, talking about how great that suit was. It took them five years to get back here again. So it's hard. And you got to have a team that's willing to, to move forward, you know, that has more of an appetite. That's a hard thing to do. Players get comfortable. I, I think it, that's an interesting lens to look at this current Super Bowl matchup with, because you mentioned Philadelphia. There are some carryover, but for the most part, different quarterback, yeah. different coach, so many different parts. That versus what Kansas City's done with the same course, retooling from their Super Bowl loss. Is there one that impresses you more from a team building standpoint? I think Philly, you got to give them credit because I was not a Hurts guy coming out of college. The guy gets benched in the conference in, a, in, a, in, an all, in, in the uh, a championship game because he can't really throw it yeah. right, and it goes to Oklahoma. And I think what people misconstrue about Oklahoma's offense and Lincoln Riley, it's more run than it is pass, right? Definitely. And so you. You know, he didn't really throw it there, and they took a chance on him. And then what I give them a ton of credit for is they divide, I call it the six-back offense. So what they've been able to do is run. He is the main runner in their offense. Yes. So you have to account for him as the sixth back, okay? Whereas Patrick Mahomes scrambles, but he's not a runner. In the, they don't call power for Patrick Mahomes. They don't call they don't call counter for Patrick Mahomes. They call counter for Hurts. They call power for Hurts. So they've developed an offense around his skill set and his work ethic and his character elevated himself into this role to go from a guy that I didn't think was going to be able to, to do it. Because when you watched him in college or watched him even in his first year in the pros, he held the ball. He couldn't throw it. He wouldn't throw it. He couldn't anticipate throws. Now they've developed an offense where he doesn't really have to do that. But isn't why he was so underappreciated exactly why the Eagles are in this position to build the team around him because his, his contract is, is yeah, he's not yeah. paying a lot of money. I mean, well, with the final four, you know, so the way you mark your success in the NFL is how many final four games you get to, right? So that's because if you measure yourself by the Super Bowl, that's a hard thing to do. So to get to the final four is a challenge and that John Madden went six times before he could break through. So it's really hard. And I think when you study the final four teams, three of them are have quarterbacks on the rookie contract. Okay, and so one of the teams does it. Now, let's. so how does this affect the game? We're going to go play a game this Sunday where the worst special teams, the Chiefs, it has a high-priced quarterback. The reason they have the worst special teams is because they have to have so many young players on their roster to make up for Mahomes. The Eagles are 31st in special teams because they have so many other veteran players that they've captured around that they've had to give up. So these have 11 college players make their team, each team. And that's why you don't have great special teams because people think, well, special teams are a bunch of young guys running down. That's not it. you got to have experienced guys know how to cover kicks and do all that. And that's why this game, which is interesting, has two of those got teams that are the worst special teams in the league. And, and both getting there in different ways with those resources. I want to look at the top, and we've talked a lot about Philadelphia. We'll get to Kansas City. How impressed by Nick Sirianni's development from his opening press yeah. conference, which so many people <laughs> reference to what he's become now, his decision-making and aggression as a head coach? So one of the things I do is uh, I write this thing called The Daily Coach. We do, George Raveling, the former basketball coach at USC. We wrote about that today, about how that first impression by Nick Sirianni was so bad. And typically what you want to do is tell a story. You want to tell a story, which he didn't do. But since then, he's told a great story. He's relinquished himself from the play caller. He's taken a step back. He's become a head coach. And all the credit to develop the six-back offense goes with him. And he's been willing to be adaptive. The Eagles are, I've often said this about the Eagles because I live back there. They are an organization that they want the organization to carry the head coach, not the head coach carry the organization. I think if you look at the relationship breakup between Peterson and the Eagles, it was because of that, right? Peterson, having won a Super Bowl, wanted more say in a lot of things. The Eagles wanted to run their organization. And I think Sirianni's done a great job of learning how to become a coach, developing this offense, and growing into the role. I think he's been great. 
So from that side to Andy Reid on the other side, yeah. the perennial veteran guy who's used to this stage, where do you think the experience for him shows up the most in this weekend in the game? So for me, football is a game of three dimensions, right? The first quarter is all about assessment. So when you're watching the game on television, you're assessing as a coach, you're assessing, is this the game plan we practiced against? Is this what we think they're going to do? The second and the third quarter is about adjustments to that assessment. So how do we adjust this? How do we adjust that? What do we do if they do this? What do we do? And then the fourth quarter is a standalone game. So you've got to make decisions in the fourth quarter that stand alone. This is why I wear this ring because Belichick did that in the fourth quarter. So I think Andy understands that. These are two teams that are fascinating. So if you want to look at any stat in all of football, the number one stat on who gets to the Super Bowl is first half point differential. It's been time immemorial. Wow. It always is. Who scores the most and gives up the least points in the first half? The Eagles score 18 points in the first half. The Chiefs score 15.5. The Eagles only. The Eagles plus minus margin is 9-6. The Chiefs is 4-8. So they're used to playing from in front. Mm -hmm. And so they set their team that way. And I think that that strategy is gone. Now, who has to play the different way is going to determine that. you got to believe the way that they coach in Kansas City. Andy's ability to adjust gives him a, fa gives him a chance. Sirianni's going to have to be sharp on his game, and, and he's going to have to not take the chances that provide too much risk. I and mean, that's what you got to be really careful with. Interesting, the Chiefs are the, 31st, the worst team in the National Football League in third and short, and that's going to be the most critical down in this game. So Andy's got to have a lot of plays on his play sheet that cover third and two that aren't runs that are somehow I throw this football. And the and the, and this, and the Eagles are going to know that. So I think that's the game within the game. And doing all that while accounting for Patrick Mahomes, who at this point we saw in the AFC Championship on that hobbled ankle in plenty of critical spots in the second half, just say, hey, forget it. I am going to go and battle right. through this play and make the play. With two weeks to prepare and rest leading up to this, you'd imagine they're approaching this like he is as fully healthy as they're going to expect. I think he is. And I think if you're Jonathan Gannon, I mean, how do you stop? a great quarterback on any level. The, everybody thinks it's coverage, right? It's not. It's about how you rush your defensive linemen. I think what the 49ers tried to do against the, the Eagles was they kept those ends, and as soon as those ends got up as high as the quarterback, yep. they pushed the pocket in, and then they had pressure from inside. When you play Mahomes, you're going to have to keep them in the pocket. The game that I keep going back to is the Tennessee game. So Tennessee plays the Chiefs after, their, after the Chiefs buy. It's the first game. Tennessee's playing with Malik, Holm, Malik Willis. They get one first down after the five-minute mark in the second quarter, yet the game goes to overtime. Mahomes has got to throw it 68 times in the game. They can't run it. And it takes two quarterback scrambles from Mahomes to get the game to overtime. He runs 20 yards, and then he runs a 14-yard touchdown. So you've got to keep Mahomes in the pocket, too, because what, what does Mahomes want to do more than anything? He wants to play schoolyard football. Yep. He wants to play to break down, and then I take over. And then I make these great plays, and that's what you got to do. So, to me, this is a game about which defensive front rushes the quarterback the right way. Well, with all the similarities that's been reported about these teams, the record, the amount of points scored in the regular season, what's going to be the biggest difference that we see between these two? Obviously, with the two quarterbacks dynamic, but what's the biggest difference? I think it's going to be the Philadelphia defensive front. So, when you watch, what is the Achilles heel of the Chiefs? So, the Chiefs have played the Bengals four times, right? And in those games, the Bengals, in the first three games, the Bengals limited them to 27 possessions in three games total. So the Bengals did a great job of limiting Mahomes from being on the field. The other thing they did is they were able to pressure them with their defensive front. They didn't have to blitz to pressure them. They, and that's key. Tennessee, I keep going back to that game. Tennessee rushed four in that game. They gave up a zillion yards, but they rushed four. They sacked them four times. I think that's going to be the game. Can this chief offensive line, you know, they're paid Orlando Brown. So remember, go back to the Tampa Super Bowl. They lose to Tampa. They, they got their butts kicked up front. Now, Eric Fisher got hurt in Buffalo the week before, so they had to start Mike Reimers at left tackle. So because of that, they got killed up front. The, the Bucks defensive front destroyed Mahomes 31-9. I think that's the game. And they got Orlando Brown's got to play his best. Wiley's got to play his best. And Tooney and, and Humphrey and, and Smith, all those guys inside, they have to play their best football. If they don't, Mahomes won't be as good as he can be. And I think especially with the Chiefs, we've seen so much of this year. The multi-tight end sets have become much more norm around there. The 13 personnel looks. All things that they can use formationally to try and give those guys some help. But you're right. At the end of the day, it's always the one-on-one -on -one matchups up front when you've got that many guys right. loaded up on that pass. I mean, look, here, here, you know, you played football in your backyard. You played football in your backyard. When it was five Mississippi, the quarterback could make a throw. When it was three Mississippi, he had a hard time throwing. Mm -hmm. That's pro football. So if, if, if you hold, the, if the Chiefs have five Mississippi, Mahomes is going to win the game. 
if the Eagles make it three Mississippi, they're going to win the game. I mean, it's as simple as that, right? And so that's really what we're looking at. And I think that's going to be the essence of the game. If you can control that, you can do it. Mahomes is so good, though. you got to be able to run them down in the pocket. you got to have fast ends. The Eagles do. It is going to be fascinating. Football is a very complicated game, but it could always become a very simple game that's right. when it matters the most. Uh, Mike, we appreciate the Thank time. Thank you, guys. Thank good you to be so here. Much appreciate for this. Uh, the GM Shuffle, everyone, make sure you check it out. Phenomenal Thank stuff, you. as always. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. What's up, everybody? Back with Gojo with Mike Golick Jr., Brandon Newman, super producer here, as always. Stormy Bonatoni here from VSIN, the final countdown. Nailed it. I have almost called it the final drive now after you pointed out your guy's logo looks like a speedometer. It's my fault. I apologize. But it does, kind of, right? And you're like, Stormy, it's a clock. What are you talking about? But it, it's giving speedometer vibes. It's, <laughs> we're, you know. We're giving speedometer vibes there. You commented, Brandon, giving elite dad vibes. The Thank YouTube you. content has never been more valuable than it is this True. week as Brandon Newman has put on a tour de force of Super Bowl fashion. Oh my goodness, the style game, my man. And Insane. I, I can't wait to run it back because there's more eyes now. You can redo some shirts. Not everyone's Ooh. following me on Instagram, so mm. I can't wait to do the repeats. Well, I, I, I wore special shoes yesterday specifically for my Golic Jr. yesterday oh, because nice. I thought I was going to be with you guys yesterday and I'm super excited oh, about it. And then today I'm, I'm, I'm Boots Girl today, so I'm just a loser and <laughs> there's many, no recovering. How many shoes did you pack for this trip? Three. Okay. Damn, that's see the, the spin zone is though. Oh, but I did also pack slippers. Okay. And I'm, slides. Oh, okay. So and separately. Like in my so backpack. Six. So. I, <laughs> So five. Six. So I guess five. five? That's five. Okay, five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Counting's hard. <laughs> but yeah. those two were in my backpack because those are like, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a slippers girl. Oh, I'm listen, yeah. that's just a Super Bowl veteran. Like, that's someone who understands this is a long week. You start from the ground up. We build the foundation. Comfort is key. You are yeah. literal boots on the ground today for us. Whoa. Oh. See? You know, it's like you speak for a living or something. The I, wit is it, just. Yeah, we're there. right there. You guys bring it out of me. We've got great teammates <laughs> here. Uh, we obviously want to get to, especially with you. I've seen you do a bunch of cool stuff with some of the Super Bowl prop bets. We are right next to the TikTok booth. I have to imagine uh, you're, like, pulsating right now as you have become one of sports media's prominent TikTokers. Oh, my gosh. No, I'm terrible. I'm a knucklehead, and that's the problem. I just find stupid sounds, and I provide <laughs> nothing of value. So if you want to tune in, it's just going to be something for you to laugh at me about. I think self-deprecating is the only real way to go when oh, it comes yeah, to this always. type of thing. But I tried to give some knowledge the other day. I've been doing this little Super Bowl segment lately called Stormy Does the Research So You Don't Have To, and it's just Love on it. kind of silly, goofy things like the Gatorade prop or the coin toss numbers. and <laughs> So you had a fascinating one with that, and we do want to look at some props with you, but I was blown away. We were talking on the sweat with our friends Emerson and Jesse about the Gatorade prop. Mm -hmm. You have pointed out that there is one color that has never made an appearance in the Gatorade bath. Absolute insanity to me. Red. Fruit punch. Do we call them flavors or colors? I, That's, I, like I always struggle with that. Yeah, I like because orange is both. So it's. it's I, I like saving. to call it by its uh, biblical name, Red Forty. Is Red Forty <laughs> die? Yeah, it's Red Wait, Forty. This is an important aside. Yellow to number this. five. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys consider that Gatorade flavor yellow or green? I've seen Chris Long have this debate that that yellow Gatorade is actually green. I think it's completely misguided. I love Chris, but he's dead wrong. Well, it's yellow. It's yellow. The flavor is lemon lime, so maybe the thought of it yes. is deceiving from right. that standpoint. Right. But what I have heard is that, and you're the players, you're the athletes, you you are used to the Gatorade in the big buckets more so than just Joe Schmo over here, but apparently it has to do with the amount of powder that you put in there. Yes. If you put in a certain amount of powder, it starts to get a deeper color. A deeper, uh, deeper green. Is that yeah. true? Yeah, absolutely. So, we used to steal those and make drinks for parties when we were in college. Okay. Yeah. Jungle juice. Yeah. 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 There's something else in those as well. Um, yes, exactly. <laughs> I've heard. It's usually grain alcohol. Um, but yeah, red has <laughs> never ever been dumped on a game-winning coach in the Super Bowl, which I thought was wild because Fruit Punch is one of the yeah. like more popular, popular yeah. common flavors, but never been used before. Blue has been in back-to-back -back Super Bowls, three of the last four, so it's Ooh. very popular. But we've got some angles here with Kansas City and Philadelphia because mm. you've got um, Nick Sirianni who just had yellow Gatorade dumped on him after winning the NFC Championship game uh, against my 49ers. Which I'm just, no, you know, we're not going to talk about that side of things. Um, and the Chiefs, who won a couple years back and had orange poured on Andy Reid. So okay. that's why those two are like 
like shorter odds on the odds boards for it because there's an expectation if you think the Chiefs are going to win, hey, it's probably going to be orange instead of red, which golden opportunity, Kansas City. What are we doing? That's why I figured immediately my moron brain was like, oh, see red, hit red. It's got to be the year for it. Yeah. But wow, Boo. no red ever. All right. What a letdown. Stunned. I'm, Stunned always, I'm always thinking it's going to be something that we haven't seen before. If we've never seen red, then I'm always just hoping for the the – the impossible, like blue and red mm -hmm. mixed. Purple. Purple. See. You're I'm seeing red at that <laughs> argument. Mm. Just kidding. <laughs> Nailed it. All right, so red Gatorade, not going to be the great bet for you here. As you've looked down this week at the list, are there two or three prop bets that you really love going into this game? Any like the normal ones, obviously, some of the normal player props before we get to some of my favorite goofy ones. Yes, so I'm like very game script oriented kind of and when it comes to the outcome of this game, I feel terrible because I have no real conviction like it's going to be the Eagles, it's going to be the Chiefs. I'm so of the mindset of we're going to have a close game. I think the Eagles could have a lead a good bit of the way through this game, but you can't count out Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid in the fourth quarter, and you just can't. Yeah. So from a game portion, I did kind of a non-traditional teaser. And mm. so people maybe that don't bet a ton, uh, six-point teaser, you usually pair two games together. And instead, what I'm doing is the spread and the total tease for six points. So I brought Kansas City up from two to eight. So you're getting a little over a touchdown with the Chiefs in this okay. spot instead of just the one and a half, two points. And the total down six points to 44 and a half. Mm. So we can get an over 44 and a half. Okay. So that's kind of my vibe. I just hope we get a close game and then if they do keep it close the anticipate the anticipation for me is that KC is going to be able to get some points on the board then prop master flash over Let's here go. no I um <laughs> I like the Eagles early and uh, I mean 62 first quarter points led the NFL um Jalen Hurts for as much as we talk about his legs and dual threat ability 15 first quarter passing touchdowns this Ooh. season the most in Ooh. the league the best QBR in the first quarter in the league as well wow. and so a lot of there's a prop for Jalen Hurts to throw a first quarter touchdown pass that paid plus 245, I think. And I really liked that thought process. The Eagles, um, yeah, yes, we all know the the second quarter situations there. I mean, their scoring margin in the second quarter is just ridiculous. It's like upwards of plus 130. So um, I like them to have a first half lead as well. And it's just a little less than even money, minus 105. So about 105 bucks to win 100. I really, really like that angle. I think everything screaming, screaming Eagles early. But then after that, I'm not so sure. I know. Then we all start to get worried about the bad man. I'm wearing 15 yeah. doing Batman yeah. things. Oh, but another kind of prop angle that kind of goes with that, if we think it's going to be a close game, if we think there could be some ties, yeah. any point in the game after 0-0 zero, zero for there to be a tie is like a minus 110 bet. Wow. And I think that's mm. super reasonable. You could get yes. a 10-10 score if we get into another situation like the AFC Championship where we have a walk-off field goal in regulation or something. Like, There's some fun ways to bet the thought process you have on the game yeah. without actually betting the winner because I'd be struggling there. Well, there's, that, there's that prop. I think it's at 130, but it's two and a half, over two and a half rushing touchdowns. Okay. Like, I, I like that. Well, I think in this game especially, Philadelphia, you look at the way their defense has been hurt this season. It's been on the ground. The Kansas City Chiefs have sort of revamped their rushing attack this year, a lot more under center stuff. And in this game, they're going to have to do that with the amount of injury a wide receiver. You combine that with Philly on the other side. That was one that stuck out to me here. There is one, and now you talk, all of this is incredibly sound, incredibly well-researched. I need one vibes bet on the board for okay. me. Ooh. When I saw DraftKings had any O lineman to score one or more receiving touchdowns at plus 3,500, I feel like it's our duty as Americans yes. to bet that purely for the good intentions. And you've got really quality athletes on both offensive lines, both of them healthy all year mm -hmm. long. All these guys, same starting five, which means they got that ability and practice to go over to coach constantly all year long. Lane Johnson's over there with Shane Steichen and Nick Sirianni going, you know I played tight end in college. <laughs> You know I was a quarterback. You know I'm one of the best athletes in the NFL. You show off the mitts in pre-practice here. Like, so like, this is a total vibes play I for me. I, I love feel it. Like you can just sprinkle I a little feel bit. like you wouldn't be you if you didn't place right. that bet. True. I kind of think now that this is out there in the world, you need to have the thick six 
t-shirt on with your 35 yes. to 1 ticket stapled to the t-shirt oh. on the big man touchdown. Like, let's make things happen. And to that end, I feel like this is always one that people think about, especially we saw so many Tom Brady dropped passes. Philly special has lived in everyone's mind forever. We got the Eagles back in here. Non-quarterback with a touchdown pass, plus 2,200 in this game. I'm not sure if we've got anyone I'm confident in tossing the rock, but always an interesting side to think about knowing history with this particular Eagles franchise. Well, yeah, and, like, obviously, different team, different coaching staff. Surely. But still a coach that loves to be aggressive, yeah. and we know that, and loves to have a little bit of fun. But on the Chiefs side of things, too, like, the creativity is always there. I mean, oh. we saw a little ring around the rosy situation recently. Like, there's no reason to me why we couldn't try to dial up some. It's the Super Bowl. Hey, yep. Anything can happen. Travis Kelsey, the MVP, uh, MVS, excuse me. Yes, well, speaking of MVP in here, Stormy, I feel like as far as MVP odds go for Super Bowl, Jalen Hurts and Patrick Mahomes understandably leading the charge at the top. For the Mahomes side of things, there's no one else on the Chiefs you'd feel comfortable betting MVP odds for, Not correct? really, unless you want to throw like a long shot Chris Jones out there, which Ooh. I don't hate. Um, I but like yeah, it's, it's kind of one of those situations where like if you were getting a better number, although now Patrick Mahomes has turned into the favorite today over Jalen Hurts because people have been kind of taking the angle of if you can bet Patrick Mahomes for MVP and get a better plus money number than betting Kansas City money line, why not do that? Right. And so now things are switching a little bit in there. For me, yes, if Casey wins, it's it's going to be because Patrick Mahomes, despite dealing with injuries, despite his whole receiving crew dealing with injuries, he's going to pull off something incredible. He's going to get the yards. He's going to get the connection with Travis Kelsey. I guess maybe if he didn't rack up a ton of yards and do miraculous things, but Travis Kelsey just somehow was always making himself available. A 10 to 1 shot on Kelsey, I don't hate. But as far as KC, I think those are the only three options. And I wouldn't waste more than just a sprinkle of money on anyone but Mahomes if you like Kansas City. Philadelphia being More the favorite options. in this game. Now yeah. we're talking. Obviously, Jalen Hurts, we know, <laughs> a little bit banged up in the shoulder coming into this one. Plenty of weapons. Is there anyone else there that you look at as a potential long shot outside of the quarterback? Well, we've seen Miles Sanders' number get cut down a good bit from like 35 to 1 to 22 to 1 because I think a lot of people are of the mindset that if they're having success on the ground, it's going to come through him. I know I know, we've seen a lot of talk about like Gainwell getting his touches. Boston Scott, obviously, four touchdowns the last five games, but that's largely been the back half of games, mm -hmm. especially here in the playoffs where they've gotten out to extensive leads and the game's over and there's no need for Sanders to continue putting in that normal workload. So if it's a tight game like we all anticipate it is and they need to have success on the ground, he's going to be a big part of that and there could be potential for a big day. But if you want to do another long shot, like I said with Chris Jones, Hassan Reddick I think could be a really fun mm -hmm. one. He probably was the MVP of the NFC Championship game for me, so why couldn't he do it here? I, I, I wasn't going to bring up the Listen... Thing. I mean, hey, can I brighten so it up? emotional. Can I brighten, brighten up the mood? Ah. I brighten up the mood here. Talking okay. about games within the game and long shots. Rihanna's first song Ooh, for yeah, halftime. Now we're talking. <sighs> okay. Now we're talking. Right. First off, Hit are you me. excited? Big Rihanna fan. Where are we at on this halftime Can show? we talk about how many bangers this woman has? Thank you. We play with, right now we can. I think it's going to be awesome. Heaters. I'm super excited about it. And for those of us that aren't actually, like, I'm not going to be at the Super Bowl watching the game on Sunday. I like the at-home experience of the Super Bowl. Absolutely. And the halftime show specifically is a made-for-TV event, you know? Like, yes. it's all camera angles and stuff. I think it's going to be epic. I'm I'm very excited. You mean you don't think the in-stadium Lady Gaga jumping from the top <laughs> of the stands looked as good as it did on TV? I, I for one, am shocked. But, Brandon, what are the odds? So yes, it's the opening it. song of her halftime routine. Yes. Because to Stormy's point, banger after banger. Rihanna, while she has been out of the public eye for a while, becoming a mother, being a billionaire, overall badass, uh, she's got heat this just for in, days. This just in, I zoomed in on the graphic, not real odds. Not what? real. Not real odds. You fit. Oh, theoretical. Well, theoretical. Right, theoretical odds. Let's walk with re yes. theoretical yes. odds. Okay, then. it's all vibes okay. anyway. First song we got Rue Boy plus seven hundred, which no is what text. I really like. I'm sorry, guys. She's I think, not going to do that. No. I think. I think it's. I think it's. She's going to play from the heart. Get it out of the way. It's just going to be a heart pick. Talking about B sides, Rihanna. I like that. Uh, Disturbia. I need to get like a list of her top hits on my phone right now. Disturbia is at. Ooh, plus that's a good one. Three thousand. Umbrella plus two hundred and don't stop the music minus five hundred. Please I, don't stop the music could really work as an opener. I, I think. Yeah, I think that could favorite. really. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That is. What was the number yep. again? 
uh, minus 500? Yeah, that could mm, that could really work. But Umbrella, and, and with Jay-Z's partnership in the NBA, mm -hmm. it could be easy for him to do that and then get back to his seat. I well, pour it up, pour it up. Ooh. Like, that could be a good... Like it's, it's got to be, a, it's, it's gotta be a, a starter. It's got to be, yeah. So that's my thought is it's it's usually, you don't just come in hot, right? right. No, it's can't. something to get people excited. Like, yes. I am Rihanna. How yes. are we going to do this? And so I it's could, a warm up act of a song. I could see it being one of those songs that has like the, the starters that doesn't have music behind it to yeah. start. Okay. Mm, okay. I had this exact conversation with Nora Princiati from The Ringer about stripping it down. Yes. Drums, lights, flashes, quick, work. Could be a sneaky underdog in mm -hmm. there to start with, because you could just kind of tease in that little beat. That's the rude boy. That's the rude boy. Of a, yeah. I, I see the, the same vibes. Mm -hmm. Same yeah. vibes. I'm so excited. I am jazzed for this one. Going to be a phenomenal halftime show. The irony of all this, my father, Mike Golick Sr., who's going to be joining on the same podcast, is the only one of us who is actually going to be on the field in the stadium for the Super Bowl halftime show on the sideline for Westwood One. So we are all going to be at home enjoying the cinematic version. My dad is going to be mere feet from Rihanna. Feet from Rihanna and probably like dodging background dancers everywhere he goes. Yeah. There's going to be pyrotechnics, so please tell Golik Sr. to stay safe. I see him in my peripheral yeah. over there. I know. Stay safe, sir. I need those pyrotechnics <laughs> to singe off some of his hair so he I just, can start to make a comeback. The, let's be real. At the end of the day, regardless of how great it is, he's just going to be annoyed. He's going to be very Does he annoyed not, not a big Rihanna process. fan? Uh, you know what? I Publicly, I have instructed him on one thing around the Super Bowl is if you are ever asked, I don't care what your honest truth is, you are a Rihanna fan. Yeah. You don't want parts with that Navy. Yeah, you, true. Learned, you saw what happened with Stephen A. Smith. They had that man in an unmarked van having to issue an apology from an unmarked location for fear of the Navy's <laughs> reply. You can't go viral for the wrong reasons. Nope. You know, it's important. Priorities. That's, that's you say. Say. That's Wise advice from Stormy Bond and Tony on the betting front, on the life front, on surviving Super Bowl halftime. You definitely don't hear that often on the life front, so <laughs> thanks. Preach. Stormy, thank you so much. We appreciate your time, buddy. Thank you, guys. You're the best. Busy show today. Yes. Nice to keep it within the family here. DK Vsan, everyone that's been over here with us at the Nice Set Radio Row. Yeah, it feels like a very appropriate hump day. I, I'm getting that, that second that second wave energy, you know, the, the last leg. Yeah, it is. I mean, we're our, I mean, coming up, it'll be our last show tomorrow for the week around here. Still busy buzzing. This place is flooding in with people right now. But we got to end this thing the way we always do, Brandon. This, that, and the third. Quick, three quick stories to end the day for everybody here. Uh, no sing song this week. We, we, we sang a little bit uh, right before we got here. That is true. That so is true. We I'm, sang I'm a little bit on this podcast. Yes. This, that, and the third, third, third. This, that, and the third, 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 third. Go ahead. There we go. Fair use. As always, make sure you download, subscribe, rate, and review. <laughs> leave us a five-star rating. Uh, leave us a review. Brandon, let's get to this. I thought this was interesting. As we talked about the big summer for the WNBA and all the spending out there, yes. the WNBA is reportedly investigating the defending champion Las Vegas Aces circumve uh, circumventing the league salary cap by reportedly making under-the-table pay uh, payments to players, a league source confirmed uh, to ESPN uh. on Wednesday. This was first reported by Next, and according to them, they've been accused of arranging calls with potential signees, either free agents or current players negotiating extensions, in which they would be offered, quote, a specific amount of money from a particular pre-selected company that worked involved would be, neg uh, would be negligible. So, it sounds like the WNBA, or not WNBA, the Aces had NIL deals going on. Yeah. And I want to know who was getting paid, who was getting the duffel bag. Honestly, I respect it. Of this course. Is, this is the mark of an organization that wants to win. Because remember, there was a legitimate Boston Globe article written about the Patriots' investment into TB12. Yes. And some of that and the thought that maybe there was some stuff going on circumventing the salary cap in the NFL. This just shows me you're willing to do whatever it takes. And the Aces, who won last year and are loaded up and appear to be one of the two super teams along with the Liberty, ready to do this thing. Yeah, you can go ahead and investigate it. This just means to me they want to win. Yes, and also the the outside thinking of Becky Hammond coming in in her first year. Like I'm, you don't, you can't tell me that she wasn't instrumental in getting creative on getting the best players played, uh, paid on her squad. Man, I tell you what, the next time Candace Parker's on Inside the NBA, Ooh, I bet the. I mean, you cannot questions. have her on that set with Chuck and Shaq because it's like Candace, Candace. Will they throw you with that bag, Candace? Candace, I know you got the bag from this. 
we all want to know how many get paid. <laughs> Why have you given Shaq such a robotic voice? <laughs> that is how Shaq delivers. Oh, my God. Brandon, let's get to that. <laughs> Speaking of delivering, Ooh. Derek Carr, who uh, was, I think, one of the star performers of the Pro Bowl as far as shade thrown at his former team in the Las Vegas Raiders, yes. uh, have apparently been granted permission by the Raiders to visit with the New Orleans Saints, according to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler. That's uh, going on. It went on Wednesday in Louisiana. It's his first known visit ahead of the Raiders' February 15th trigger date on his contract. At that point, he's going to be due $40.4 million, will become fully guaranteed. And so the Raiders are either going to have a new team absorb that, or they would have to release him if no trade partner uh, emerges by then. So a lot of incentive for the uh, Raiders to go out and see if he can get in a building that would like to get him for uh, a pretty hefty price. It seems like that release might be the way to go. Yeah, and I really like the idea of Derek Carr joining the Saints. Uh, for some reason, that makes sense to me. There's a level of stability, even if it's in top-end quarterback stability like they used to with Drew Brees, uh, that the Saints desperately need right now. And I feel like he's prayed up enough to get through all that voodoo magic that's going on down there. I do feel like they might be in the game of offseason quarterback musical chairs. We know Tom Brady out of that. Now Aaron Rodgers, still someone we've heard linked to the Jets so many times. Yes. If you're looking around at places that may make a realistic home, I feel like Carr, that release makes sense because I think someone's going to have to wait, right? Like the Jets aren't going to swing on him first, so it might behoove him to wait, but the Saints could be an interesting landing spot because they are going to have to really keep cobbling together something. All those years of the cap isn't real, uh, finally catching up with them. Yeah. Uh, let's get to the third, Brandon. We already talked about this yesterday, predictive, understood. LeBron James uh, passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the Tuesday night game for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Didn't come without some fireworks, though, because apparently Russell Westbrook and Darvin Ham got into it uh, during the halftime locker room of that game. Apparently, Russell Westbrook lingered on the floor a little bit when he was getting subbed out. Darvin Ham didn't really like that. Uh, it was all in the name of winning, even though it did not seem like anybody in that game gave a damn about the Lakers winning. LeBron James <laughs> passing Kareem with 10 seconds left in the third quarter and the, oh, maybe we'll do something from the NBA beforehand, devolved into a full-blown LeBron James tribute video it going was, on with yes. a miserable Kareem Abdul-Jabbar half-court. It was, it was uh, uh, akin to when Kobe had his last game in, in the, the 30, 40 minutes afterwards in the middle of a game that the Lakers were losing, and apparently OKC was apparently fine with it because no momentum was swung uh, with them actually coming out and, and finally and finishing off the Lakers at the end of that game. Yeah, an Oklahoma City team that's three uh, spots ahead of them right now in the Western conference yes mike but i want to get deeper into what happened on the bench when uh lebron james was shooting that shot i don't know if you noticed the only lakers player to be sitting down not watching was anthony davis and everyone is wondering if it's a personal strife between anthony davis and lebron james or and this is what i'm liking they are actively shopping Anthony Davis for pieces, and he knows about it. So he's a little bit dis, uh, you know, not involved with the Lakers right now. I just think they're all kind of over this. I mean, LeBron put on an incredible acting job, acting surprised, overwhelmed by a moment that he was clearly ready for. I, I fake just, tears were too much. The fake tears were too much. I, and, I'm I, a, and I'm a bronze sexual. Exactly. I mean, we're all excited. You were taking pictures in a bar of it. <laughs> I, I'm legitimately excited, love the player. I do wonder if now we've seen so much of the focus has been on this record this season. So much of the conversation is about playing with Bronny. The Western Conference is tightly bound in the middle. There is opportunity for movement down the second half of the season. You do wonder if this sort of clears the way for the focus to return back to the overall team, having so many of your stars now healthy and on the court together for a long stretch. Maybe they can make a run. Yeah, but not with uh, this constant one-and-done head coach because now Lakers fans want Darvin Ham's head too. Well, I, Lakers fans grow up, like yeah. figure out that sometimes you've got to let these things marinate for a little bit uh, after the bubble championship. As always, we appreciate you marinating with us. Make sure you download, subscribe, rate, review, Gojo, wherever you get your podcast. Leave us that five-star rating. Check us out on the DraftKings YouTube channel under the Gojo with Michael Jr. playlist. All this week out here, we are seeing blinged up deodorant, celebrities hawking product in here. It's going to be a great finish to the week here at Super Bowl 57. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Boom. Money in the bank.